The full text is five. The full text. The full text is five thousand two hundred words in total and is mainly divided into three parts. One, <coughs> Treasury Secretary Yellen, a pseudo dove who comes to cheat money. Two, President Reagan started the model of debt for performance. Three, the situation is worrisome, and it is becoming more and more difficult for the U.S. government to borrow money. Four, throwing away illusions, Yellen cannot reverse Sino-US relations. One, Treasury Secretary Yellen, a pseudo dove who comes to cheat money. Recently, the Sino-US struggle has been fierce, and there are many big melons. But Boss Dan has traveled a lot during this time and has no time to type. I almost laughed out loud on the bus when I saw China taking action to impose export controls on two metals, germanium and gallium. I smiled and said to my friends around me, the rabbit has finally learned to fail. In the past, the United States always made some small moves before talks with China, trying to create some leverage out of nothing to put pressure on China. But this time, it's our turn to make the first move. Yellen left for China on July 5th, and on the evening of July 3rd, we suddenly announced export control. <coughs> Yellen didn't choke to death all at once, and the prepared lines had to be revised again. Tickets are all booked, and it is not realistic for Yellen to postpone the visit. In addition, this visit is not an invitation from the Chinese side, but a request from the US side, which insists on coming. <coughs> if the US Emperor endures all this, it means that the situation of the US Emperor is worse than imagined. The Treasury Minister's visit must be for financial issues, because the US Treasury Secretary is mainly responsible for formulating and implementing the US fiscal policy, <coughs> how to collect more money, responsible for taxation and debt management and other related work, collecting money and repaying money, ordinarily, this is the internal affairs of the United States. But if a finance minister insists on visiting China, he is definitely not here to study and learn from experience, nor is he here to discuss tariffs. Because when tariffs were imposed, they did not discuss with China. If it wants to discuss the cancellation of tariffs with China, it means that the United States will definitely open its mouth and ask for benefits from other places. Not to mention the collection of US internal taxes nor is it likely to be a matter of exchange rates or the internationalization of the renminbi. If it is a topic in this regard, it should be the chairman of the Federal Reserve talking to the president of our People's Bank of China. Within the scope of Yellen's responsibilities, the main topics that can be linked to China are either inflation or US debt. I guess 9 times out of 10, they are still here to borrow money, selling US debt. The problem is that various problems and contradictions between China and the United States are intertwined and intricate, and they are all connected together, so many issues will definitely be discussed incidentally. When she talks about US debt, we talk about sanctions with her, when she talks about sanctions with us, we talk about countermeasures with her, when she talks about countermeasures with us, we talk about decoupling with her, talk to her about money, she talks about money with us, and we talk about US debt with her. You can't get around her. Some people say that she is a dove, because she once opposed the trade war with China and also opposed decoupling with China. But this understanding is obviously superficial. There are no doves in the US political circle. If there is one, I would rather believe that it is the US military, because the top US military officials know best that the People's Liberation Army is powerful. What do you think of Yellen's superficial dovishness? Because of the role. It is not easy to be the finance minister of the United States. The foreign debt owes more than 32 trillion. The problem is that we have to continue to ask for alms, and China happens to be the largest food producer with the most surplus food in the global village. So the most embarrassing thing for her is that while Biden is anti-China, he also forces her to go to China to borrow money. This job is really hard to do. So no matter how anti what or reluctant she is in her heart, she has to endure in this position. In fact, there is no big difference between her and Blinken, Sullivan, and Raimondo in terms of China. It is cooperation in the field of cooperation, competition in the field of competition, and confrontation in the field of confrontation. The only difference is the division of fields. For example, Blinken may think that we should confront each other in the fields of science and technology, finance, and military affairs, <coughs> and cooperate in the field of diplomacy, which I am in charge of. After all, we are two big countries, and dialogue still needs to be carried out. 
Raimondo of the Ministry of Commerce may think, we should confront China in finance, technology, and military, but we still need to cooperate in business, which I am in charge of, and we still need to earn money. Yellen of the Treasury Department believes that as long as you don't ask me for money, you can fight as much as you want. Also, can you guys wait until I borrow the money? At this moment, the U.S. Secretary of Defense turned black with anger, and said, Shut up all of you. It is still a military confrontation. Is it a joke to fight with China? Do you really think that Dongfen is a fire stick? I really thought the rabbit was Afghanistan. No, it seems that we didn't win in Afghanistan either. In a speech by Yellen in April, there was also an argument of the American rule of three, cooperation should be cooperated, competition should be competed, and confrontation should be confronted. Even Yellen is more insidious, borrowing money and then fighting. In her speech, she stated that she seeks to establish a healthy economic relationship with China, as well as cooperation on global challenges, the cooperation of the cooperation, Chinese competition. But she also argued that the United States will continue to use various means to respond to China's economic coercion, including export controls, sanctions, and censorship, the confrontation of the confrontation. On the occasion of Yellen's visit to China, the New York Times claimed that Yellen's challenge is to convince Chinese officials that a series of measures by the United States to prevent China from obtaining sensitive technologies such as semiconductors in the name of national security are not aimed at harming the Chinese economy. Why do you say it is an Anglo-Saxon bandit? While driving you to death, he said that he didn't mean it. What's even more shameless is that, while beating you, she tricked you into lending her money. 2. President Reagan started the model of debt for performance. Next, let's talk about the issue of US debt. Government operations are actually the same as living at home, spending money everywhere. But what to do if you have no money, you have to find a way to borrow money if you have no money, the country borrows money is the national debt. There are two ways for the United States to borrow money, one is to borrow money from the Federal Reserve, and the other is to borrow money from dollar holders. Borrow money from the Federal Reserve, issue treasury bonds to the Federal Reserve Act. As for the Fed's money, it only needs to start the money printing machine. This method is the most convenient, but has huge side effects. After all, this money is printed out of thin air, which will cause the total number of dollars on the market to skyrocket, triggering currency depreciation, inflation. Although the Federal Reserve started printing money to depreciate our foreign exchange, the US dollar we hold is a drop in the bucket compared to the United States itself. After all, the US dollar is the only legal currency in the United States, and the United States is the largest economy in the world. I would like the Federal Reserve to start printing money recklessly, just like Chiang Kai-shen's fiat currency. In order to prevent our foreign exchange from becoming waste paper like legal currency, we must diversify foreign exchange on the one hand and manage money on the other. Of the 3 trillion US dollars of foreign exchange in my country, the US dollar accounts for about two-thirds, or about 2 trillion US dollars in foreign exchange. The 2 trillion UN cannot be held in hand and wait for depreciation. In addition to retaining some foreign exchange settlement liquidity, the rest needs to be invested or purchased in dollar-denominated assets and bonds, such as US bonds. Purchasing dollar-denominated assets and slash or bonds provide some protection against dollar inflation. Once the Federal Reserve issues excessive currency, dollar assets will inevitably rise, offsetting inflation to a certain extent. In addition, US debt also has certain interest. Going back to the issue of US government borrowing. Another way to issue treasury bonds is to issue to holders of US dollars, that is, whoever has US dollars borrows them. The creditors of the U.S. government are mainly divided into those within the U.S. and those outside the U.S. American creditors, including the aforementioned Federal Reserve, American individuals, or companies, as well as American social security funds and pension funds, hold more than 70% of U.S. national debt and more than 20% of overseas debt. This method of borrowing money does not increase the total amount of U.S. dollars in the market, but only accelerates the circulation of U.S. dollars, and the damage to the economy is relatively small. But there is a limit to borrowing money. For the US government, it can be said that it is living beyond its means. <coughs> borrowing is also a monetary tool to regulate the economy. It's like living a life, who hasn't had a time when the cash flow is in short supply and urgently needs money. For example, after eating the awful, one settles the bill, and it happens to be 10,000 calories, but there are only 9,000, 
so I can't leave with 1000 UN. Buying a house, getting married, paying tuition fees, seeing a doctor, etc. are all times when money is concentrated, and relatives and friends should give each other a helping hand. But the problem in the United States is that it regards debt as the norm, and the total debt is getting bigger and bigger, and the growth rate seriously exceeds the repayment ability. When it comes to US national debt, Reagan has to be mentioned. When Ronald Reagan came to power in 1981, the United States was facing a serious economic crisis. Of course Reagan wanted to improve his political performance, but unfortunately he had no money, so what should he do? Borrowing heavily and borrowing money to achieve political achievements. Reagan's reforms did bring about economic growth in the United States. But the cost is long term. The high debt in the United States began with Reagan. In addition, the US economy has begun to hollow out the industry and financialize the economy, and the virtual economy has become popular. Americans overconsume, and the US government overconsumes. When Reagan came to power, the national debt was only $1 trillion, and the ratio of the US national debt to GDP was only 31.8%. When he stepped down, the national debt of the United States more than tripled, and the United States changed from the world's largest creditor country to the world's largest debtor country, and the ratio of national debt to GDP rose to 50.6%. Reagan started a very bad model, that is, borrowing money to buy political achievements. Anyway, the debt will be repaid by the next or next term. Maybe the next term will be when the opposition party comes to power. Not borrowing money is also a bastard. So starting from Reagan, the national debt of the United States basically rose all the way. Except during the Clinton period. During the Clinton period, on the one hand, it caught up with the dividends of IT, and on the other hand, it benefited from the harvest of the Soviet Union. When Obama took office in 2009, the total national debt accounted for 82.3% of GDP, which rose to 104.8% in 2017 when Trump took office, and increased again to 128.8% when Biden took office in 2021. Since it is a debt, it must be repaid. Not only the principal has to be repaid, but also the interest. In 2022, the federal fiscal revenue of the United States will only be 4.9 trillion, Leaving aside the principal, if the interest rate is 2%, the interest alone will cost 600 billion US dollars a year. Whether we use credit cards, apply for bank loans, or even borrow money from friends, we more or less have a limit. The US government originally had a limit, called the debt ceiling. Therefore, the US government often encounters the problem of the debt ceiling. But this has never been a problem for the US government, because there is a unique trick, which is to show it badly. Government shutdown or debt default. Why do you say that the Democratic Party and the Republican Party are fighting but not breaking up? After all, these are parties that serve the American bourgeoisie. At critical times, members of the US Congress can still make it clear that the US will not really die, so they will always agree to raise the debt ceiling in the end. So after World War II, the US raised the debt ceiling 103 times, that is, increased the borrowing limit for the US federal government. Since 2001, it has been raised more than 20 times. On January 19th this year, the White House once again maxed out the credit card limit, which hit the upper limit of 31.4 trillion US dollars. If the quota is not increased, the funds of the US Treasury Department will be exhausted before June 1st, that is, the US will be unable to repay the maturing national debt. As I expected, at the last moment, the Republican Party still hesitated. That is, on May 31st, the Republican Party approved the Biden administration's bill to increase the quota in the House of Representatives, and the Senate also passed it a day later. Under the bill, the U.S. debt ceiling is temporarily lifted until January 1, 2025. This means that during Biden's tenure, he can continue to borrow money crazily. How crazy is it? The national debt of the United States suddenly soared to $32.3 trillion, nearly $1 trillion more than at the beginning of the year. Home life. Not long after Obama stepped down, it was only 16 trillion. This has doubled in less than seven years. At this rate, it will double to 64 trillion in 2030. Unless there are drastic cuts in spending, which, again, is unlikely. 3. The situation is worrisome, and it is becoming more and more difficult for the US government to borrow money. From the perspective of the US deficit, 
Biden will have to borrow at least $2 trillion U.S. dollars this year. Because the deficit in the first half of the 2023 fiscal year has reached $1.1 trillion, and the second half of the year will not be less than this. Therefore, by the end of 2024, the United States will have to receive 3 to $4 trillion. Anyone who has lived through hard times knows that the tighter the capital chain, the harder it is to borrow money, because it means greater risk for creditors. At this time, it is necessary to raise interest rates or sell government bonds at a discount. It is a sign that money is becoming increasingly difficult to borrow, that is, both the ratio and the total amount of national debt held by overseas creditors are declining. In May of this year, U.S. foreign creditors owned U.S. debt of $6.9 trillion, accounting for 21.9% of the total debt. At its peak, however, it was 35%. In absolute terms, the total amount of U.S. debt held by foreign creditors is also falling. In December 2021, Overseas holdings of U.S. debt were as high as 7.8 trillion U.S. dollars, which dropped to 7.3 trillion U.S. dollars in December 2022, and now it has dropped to 6.9 trillion U.S. dollars. What does this mean? It means that from the end of 2021 to the present, the domestic debt held by the United States has increased by nearly 3.5 trillion, and the total national debt held by Americans is about 24.5 trillion, which is almost equal to the annual GDP of the United States. This shows that at least other countries believe that the risk of U.S. debt is high and their willingness to buy is low. There is another data that illustrates this point, the yield of U.S. bonds. In general, the longer the debt, the higher the risk, and the higher the yield, just like the interest rate on time deposits. But U.S. Treasury yields, both short and long term, remain hot. Even more anomalously, short term Treasury yields are higher than long term Treasury bonds. The one-year U.S. Treasury yield was as high as 5.46%, while the 10-year yielded 4.06% and the 30-year 4.01%. What is the yield on U.S. bonds? This is really hard to say, because it is dynamic. We have to start with the issuance of U.S. debt. U.S. bonds are a bit like stocks, with a primary market and a secondary market. The U.S. Department of the Treasury regularly issues Treasury bonds through auctions, and the price of treasury bonds is determined by participants in the primary market through auctions. With more buyers, the price of U.S. bond issuance will be higher, and the yield of investors will be lower. <coughs> Conversely, if no one is interested, no one wants to bid, the U.S. Treasury will have to discount the sale. If it is not sold, it can only be left to the Fed to cover the bottom line. Once the Fed prints it, it will have to find a handful of rice to cook anyway. As mentioned earlier, but the side effects are very serious, it is tantamount to drinking poison to quench thirst. The United States has been trying to control inflation for several years, and the activation of nuclear-powered money printing machines will undoubtedly increase inflation in the United States and make the economic situation worse. After talking about the primary market, let's talk about the secondary market. The secondary market is like stock trading. That is, even though I won a 30-year treasury bond, it does not mean that I will be able to withdraw it after 30 years, and I can trade it in the secondary market. But there is a problem with trading, which is the same bidding mechanism as stocks. If you sell quickly and sell a lot, you must sell at a lower price. If the market believes that U.S. bonds are risky and selling orders are greater than buying orders, they will also have to sell at a lower price. But this is a matter between leaks and leaks. The U.S. Treasury has already borrowed money in the primary market. That is to say, even if China sells U.S. debt, it has no direct relationship with the U.S. Treasury Department, because other investors are taking over. There is no direct relationship, but there is an indirect relationship, which shows China's attitude, that is, it has no confidence in U.S. debt, which will affect the primary market of U.S. debt. Lack of confidence and inactive bidders will also increase financing costs for the Treasury. 4. Throwing away illusions. Yellen cannot reverse Sino-US relations. So I guess Yellen, the old hag, is selling US debt this time. The leaks in China are almost cut, the amount of GDP has been borrowed, but the fathers of foreign funders are indifferent. According to the data, the countries with the largest surplus in 2022 are China, US $877.6 billion, Russia, $332.3 billion US dollars, Saudi Arabia, 221.3 billion US dollars, Norway, US 164.3 billion dollars, Australia, 
123.1 billion US dollars, Qatar, 123.1 billion US dollars, 98.6 billion dollars. There are not many countries that are well off, so it is not easy for the United States to find someone to borrow money, and it is difficult to deal with Russia. Japan, South Korea, and the European Union can't count on it. Because last year was a deficit, they even had to sell some US debt for cash. In international settlement, the relationship between the United States and Saudi Arabia is also very embarrassing. Little Salman finds troubles for the United States every day. So Yellen can only find China with a cheeky face. It's not that Yellen is a dove, it can only be said that she pretends to be a dove and asks for help. In addition to borrowing money, the purpose of Yellen's trip will definitely be to talk about Sino-US economic cooperation, that is, to ask China to help the United States recover, because only when the U.S. economy recovers can the U.S. finances increase, and the increase in finances can increase efforts to contain China. Sino-US relations have deteriorated to this point. In the final analysis, the United States cannot face up to and accept China's rise. Based on this judgment, it is absolutely impossible to expect the finance minister to improve Sino-US relations. Even if the U.S. unilaterally cancels the additional tariffs imposed on Chinese goods according to Yellen's suggestion, it is out of the interests of the U.S. in order to further control domestic inflation and revive the economy. As long as the U.S. does not give up its high-tech control over China, as long as the U.S. does not give up the Taiwan card and the human rights card, as long as the U.S. does not give up decoupling from China, as long as the U.S. does not give up the Indo-Pacific strategy, it will be difficult for China U.S. relations to change substantially. Of course, Yellen also knows that it is difficult for her to achieve any substantive results, but she must come, because this is basically a political show. Say what you have to say, and then you can say, I have tried my best. Welcome everyone to read yesterday's article. People who want to lose weight must not come to Hefei. The speech of the General Secretary is evidence.